Hello and welcome. My name is Amanda Schmella. My collaborators are Melanie Vaughn, Adjunct Professor of Voice at NYU Tisch, and Jeanette Levetri, Director of the Voice Workshop in New York. We would like to take this opportunity to thank the Voice Foundation, Maria Russo, and Dr. Sadaloff for giving us this opportunity. We'd like to present a demographic study of professional belters, who they are and how they sing. The purpose of this study was to ask professional belters how they would define belting, how they learned to belt, how they would describe the physical experience of belting and any vocal issues that they have encountered. The methods used for this study were an online survey, multiple choice created in Google Forms. We distributed the survey to voice teachers and colleagues, students and former students, and working artists, and posted it to relevant Facebook groups, including Nats, professional voice teachers, AFA, and NISTA. We had 238 responses with 205 female. 79% of participants live and work in the United States. 65% of our participants have been singing as professional belters for more than five years. And 43% make at least half of their income as professional singers. We asked what venues they typically perform in, with the most as soloist in a band and concert halls, and the least being Broadway and West End. We asked what genres they typically perform in as belters. Musical theater came in with 87%, and pop rock was 68%. Ninety-nine percent of participants have had vocal training, and for half, that training is ongoing. Sixty-eight percent receive training specifically for belting. They sing in other styles other than belt and use multiple vocal strategies depending on the style. For ninety-seven percent of our participants, they received their vocal training from a private studio teacher and 87% from a school setting like a college or university. For this question, we allowed participants to choose more than one answer if it applied. We asked where their training for belting took place and 54% learned to belt from a private studio teacher and only 22% from a teacher at a college or university. For participants who did not receive training specific to belting, half were self-taught and half could always just do it. When asked what is belting, the majority stated that belting is chest voice or chest register dominant singing above the break. It could also be described as singing that is speech-like above the speaking range loud and powerful singing above a speaking range. And then 17% said use of speech like vowels, resonance, and placement. And 8% said any loud and powerful singing. Is all belting the same? And what factors influence belting? Our participants do not experience all belting production as being the same. The production is different depending on the range, the style, the venue, and whether they are a soloist or within a larger group. The strategies employed when belting vary, but 69% said that they focus on vowel shape, resonance, or placement. What is mix? Mix can be described as chest register and head register in a variety of ratios shifting smoothly between registers. Another answer was vowel shape, resonance, or placement. Though the majority, 78%, felt that it is chest register and head register combined. Belting and the speaking voice. 
71% of participants feel that belting has no effect on their speaking voice. Those who feel that belting affects their speaking voice said that that effect depended upon what else they were doing. Though 18 said it was positive, 10% negative, and 15% neutral. Participants generally believe that belting affects the other styles they sing, though that effect depends on what it is they are doing, as with how it affects their speaking voice. Forty-four percent said that belting is easy, and 51 percent said that it requires some effort. Less than one percent reported belting as being hard or very effortful. 74% of participants reported no loss of voice or medically diagnosed vocal pathology related to belting. Those who did have a vocal issue, it included throat tension or soreness, loss of voice, a medically diagnosed pathology, loss of high notes, chronic hoarseness, or flatting. The majority of singers with vocal issues did seek out professional assistance primarily through their ENT or a singing teacher. And only 3% were unsure of the cause of the vocal issue. In conclusion, our participants received vocal training and 68% had training specifically for belting. They studied with a teacher in a private studio and those who received no formal training on belting were split evenly between those who were self-taught and those who could always just do it. Participants believe that belting is a chest dominant sound sung above where one naturally speaks. They do not experience all belting production as being the same. They feel there is an overlap between mix and belt. And they agree that mix is a combination of chest register and head register in a variety of ratios. 71% of participants felt that belting had no effect on their speaking voice but 55% said that belting does affect the other styles that they sing. 51% report belting as requiring some effort, and 26% reported loss of voice or medically diagnosed pathology due to belting. In a follow-up survey, we'd like to reach a larger population with more male participants and more participants outside of the United States. In a separate study, we would like to record belters producing specific sounds for spectrographic analysis and get laryngeal stroboscopic videos from belters producing specific sounds such as chest, belt, mix, and head. Thank you.